Hey guys, today I want to present a solution to the second problem of this year's US EMO. First of all, let's take a look at the problem statement. We have given a positive integer k and positive integers x1, y1 up to x4, y4, such that the least common multiple of xi, yi is equal to k. Moreover, it is given that these four points form a non-degenerate rectangle. Our task is to prove that the product of the four x coordinates is a perfect square of a number. Since we have to prove a number theoretic identity, our first task or the first step we want to do is to get some equations out of this condition here. We first use the property that two opposite sides in a rectangle have equal length and are parallel. Therefore, if we subtract these two points here, we get the same result. In other words, we have the equation that x2 minus x1 is equal to x3 minus x4 and the second equation y2 minus y1 is equal to y3 minus y4. These two equations are also true in a general parallelogram. Therefore, let's try to get another equation which uses the fact that we have a right angle inside the rectangle. This implies that the vector from point 1 to point 2 is orthogonal to the vector from point 1 to point 4. And therefore, their scalar product is equal to 0. Therefore, we get that 0 is equal to x2 minus x1 times x4 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 times y4 minus y1. We would like to simplify this expression using the two equations above. And indeed, this is possible if we rewrite this equation in the following way. Namely, this is equal to x2 times x4 plus x1 times x1 minus x2 minus x4. And the second term is equal to y2 times y4 plus y1 times y1 minus y2 minus y4. We can see that x1 minus x2 minus x4 is nothing but negative of x3. And same holds for the y terms here. And therefore, we can write this as x2, x4 minus x1, x3 plus y2, y4 minus y1, y3. We now got all information out of the problem statement into equations. And now we can start proving that the product of the xi's is equal to a square number. For doing this, let's consider a prime number p that divides x1, x2, x3, x4. We want to prove that the number of times p divides the right hand side is an even number. So we want to prove that mu p of this product is equal to an even number. In order to prove this, we want to use the fact that the least common multiple of the xi, yi is always equal to k. This especially implies that if p divides one of the xi with high multiplicity, it also divides the other xj or yj with high multiplicity. To make this formal, we want to first, without loss of generality, say that nu p of x1 is the maximum of nu p of xi for 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to 4. And I want to define this to be equal to m, which is greater than 0 since p divides the product of the xi. This implies that p to the m divides k, which is equal to the least common multiple of xi, yi. And therefore, nu p of xi is greater than or equal to m, or nu p of yi is greater than or equal to m. Let's at first consider the case that for all i not equal to 1, we have that nu p of xi is less than m. This directly implies that for all i not equal to 1, we have that nu p of yi is greater than or equal to m. Using our second equation from above, this also implies that the equation here holds for i equal to 1. Now we take a look at our third equation from above. Here we see that all terms containing a y are divisible by p to the power of m. Moreover, x1 is also divisible by p to the power of m. Therefore, x1 times x3 is as well. 
This implies that the last term on the right hand side, x2 times x4, is also divisible by p to the power of m. So let's write this down. Together with our assumption that nu p of xi is less than m for i equal to 2 and 4, this implies that p divides x2 and p also divides x4. Since x1 is divisible by p, we can use our first equation to conclude that p also divides x3. In total, we figured out that all of our eight numbers are divisible by p, and therefore we could just divide all of the coordinates by p. This new rectangle satisfies all our previous condition if we take k divided by p instead of k. Moreover, we see that we stay in this case, and therefore this process can go on indefinitely, which is a contradiction. Thus, it is left to consider the case that we find an i such that nu p of x i is greater than or equal to m. And since we assumed that nu p of x1 is maximal, we know that nu p of x i is indeed equal to m. Let us denote the remaining indices by a and b. So the set should be equal to the set of the numbers 2, 3, and 4 without j. It is left to prove that nu p of xa congruent to nu p of xb modulo 2. And indeed, we will prove that nu p of xa and nu p of xb are equal. We will prove this by contradiction. So assume that nu p of xa is greater than nu p of xb. In particular, nu p of xb is less than m. And therefore, we can conclude that nu p of xb is equal to nu p of x1 plus minus xb. Using our first equation, we can rewrite x1 plus minus xb as plus minus xj plus minus xa. Since nu p of xj is greater than or equal to nu p of xa, we conclude that this is greater than or equal to nu p of xa. And this is clearly a contradiction. We conclude that nu p of xa must be equal to nu p of xb. And this allows us to rewrite nu p of x1, x2, x3, x4 as 2 times m plus 2 times nu p of xa. And this is indeed an even number. And therefore, we are done. <laughs>